see an eye opener one will look at the symbols of the Holy Spirit like the river like the wind like the oil and so on and so forth and the Lord the man of God will be expounding as he expounds the scriptures we will know that of a truth this is God in action thank you Lord in Jesus name we pray why not to pray for all who are working you know with him by that I mean other pastors who do one thing or the other and as well as the, uh, the choir, the instrumentalists, the, the, the uh, media team, the technical team, the ushers, everyone that we ministering tonight. Can we lift up our voices and say, Lord, behold those who are going to walk, Lord, alongside tonight with your servant. We lift them up before you. We pray, O oh God, anoint them, that they will do it as unto the Lord. Lord, they will not do it to show off. No, they will not do it, O oh God, to show how knowledgeable they are. But Lord, O oh God, they will know that they are rendering service unto you. And they do it in humility. And they do it, O oh God, Lord, being careful that they are working for the Almighty God, who will reward every man according to his word, work is Lord, do it, O God, do it in the lives of the females, do it in the lives of the males, uh, of the male workers, everyone in Jesus' name. We pray. We're going to be praying for our brethren. If people are not here, the man of God will not preach to an empty hall. We're going to pray that God will quicken them, that will they. They, they, they will hasten up to be in the house of God they know the time already and looking at the time now is almost uh, 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 12 minutes past or there are about the time we started I want us to pray for our bread and let's ask God to you know, help them quicken them those who are facing transfer difficulties let the Lord open the way those who are in between two opinions whether to come or not to come let God convince them to come those who are in their working places let them get favor of, of that permission they are asking to come those who are in the working in their business premises let the Lord urge them to close and rush down to the house of God not only here in the assemblies in the locations wherever can we pray can we pray and say oh Lord behold your children they ought to be here you have ordained this day that they shall come to study at your feet a little here a little there oh God Lord precept upon precept line upon line Father bring them oh God bring them oh God whatever that is holding them, hold them no more. Whatever that is holding them, hold them no more. Hold them no more. We decree a release. We command a release that the people of God will be released from whatever that is holding them, that they will come and so forth. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to pray for those in the locations. We are going to pray for those in assemblies. That as we attend here, so also they will attend. Can we pray? That there will be a zeal. There will be an enthusiasm. There will not be any excuse. There will not be any reasoning. Why they will not attend the Bible study. They will say, eh, they are wasting time. Eh, they will close into the night. I don't want to walk in the night. No, sir. The God of the day is the God of the night. The same God that watches over us in the day is the same God that watches over us in the night. He said, touch not my anointed. I do my prophets no harm. If you believe that scripture, I want you to pray and say, Oh God, bring this once, oh God, that the enemy is having a conversation with her, whether to come or not to come in the assemblies, in the locations, Lord, even in the high quarter church. Bring them, oh God, bring them, oh God, to your house. Let them be like, Oh God, David, who said, I was glad when they said, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Father, let it be so. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to pray for two important programs of the church redemption ministries that will hold one this month the other one next month like a mighty wind you know is just about 16 days away today is first and it's starting on the 17th of november through 19th let's pray for that program let's ask that the presence of the lord will be mighty that the presence of the lord will be felt that the impact of that program this year will uh, 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 grow any other one that we have ever experienced can you pray pray for god's servant our father and the lord reverend dr mokbai who is our guest speaker pray that god will anoint him in a different way for this particular program of crusade uh, uh, 2023 it shall be a war with a difference in Jesus name we pray 
Let's pray for attendance for that program that the attendance will be mighty. In spite of the economic difficulties, in spite of the fuel situation, attendance will be great. Can you pray? God said that you have spoken unto my ears. So shall I do unto you. Can you speak to God and say, Lord, we demand that Lord attendance this year will be great. It doesn't matter the economic situation. It doesn't matter the fuel situation. Lord, you are able to do it. Do it, oh God. Take over. Lord, oh God, take over that program. Take over that program. And oh God, do your will. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, let's pray for our own program, the Wind and Fire Conference. The Wind and Fire Conference 2023 is already loading. Why do I say it's loading? The outline, the outlines are in the press, the programs, the 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 other day, last week, I saw the flyer. Oh, I want you to pray for that program. Beginning from the planning stages, beginning to the execution, the funding, the men of God that will be ministering, the, uh, uh, an array of the men of God that God would anoint them. Can you pray? Open your mouth and pray and say, Oh God, behold the Wind and Fire Conference. The Wind and Fire Conference 2023 is going to be in style and class. It's going to be in style and class. We have never seen this kind of Wind and Fire conference. Lord, we pray that Lord, oh God, you do all that you are planned to do. Lord, the array of ministers, oh God, that will minister, oh God, anoint them, oh God, anoint them fresh. Beginning for our G.O. Anoint them fresh. Anoint them fresh. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you because we know you will do much more that we are asking you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, can you pray for yourself? What have you come to do? To watch others? To see friends? Can you pray? Ask the Lord not to leave you empty-handed. Ask the Lord not to pass you by. As he's calling on others that you also get your share of the blessings. Can we pray? Father, as we have come, oh God, nobody comes to the house of the king and leaves, oh God, without anything. Father, as we have come, oh God, into your house, let the blessings move. Let the blessings, oh God, Lord, be distributed to everyone. As we have packaged it, I believe that we have our packages of blessings with our names, different names on each one. Lord, let it be a release. Let it be a release. Let it be a release unto your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of being in your presence these few minutes. Thank you because all we have presented before you, we know you have answered. Because before we call, you say you have heard. While we are just speaking, you are hearing. Father, oh God, Lord, have your way. Even in tonight's Bible study, let the anointing flow. Let the anointing flow. Let the anointing flow. And let your blessings be released. Thank you, oh God. We give you all the praise and worship. As we declare this meeting open now. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. All of the Holy Ghost. And the church say, Amen. Music. Just lift up your hands to heaven and just worship the King of glory. Just exalt him, magnify him wherever you are. Just tell him sweet words. Let your worship rise before the music. Let your worship rise to your Father. Can you adore him from your heart? Can you tell him how lovely he is? Can you tell him that he is wonderful? Can you greet him with a word from your mouth? The cows and the bulls of your lips to tell him that he is beautiful beyond description. It's too marvelous for words so wonderful for comprehension it is more than our imagination can carry so I will lift up your hands and adore him glorify the God who is able to do all things magnify the God who is holy we bless you Jesus we love you Jesus we give you glory and honor. You are the Lord, and your name we glorify. We give you glory and the honor. You are the Lord, and your name we glorify. Can we sing it so? 
himself. He is the miracle worker. Hallelujah. We welcome everyone tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, can we stand as we take the congregational hymn, Spirit Divine, attend our prayer, and make our hearts thy throne. Descend with all thy gracious power. O oh, come, great spirit, come. The Trinity voices will lead us.
Let the Spirit divine attend our meeting tonight. Let him spread his wings over us tonight. Dear Holy Spirit, we thank you and we welcome you. We exalt you tonight because there we are. We exalt you because it is all about you. Therefore, come and teach us about yourself. As it is written that all your children shall be taught of the Lord and grace shall be the peace of your children. Let it be so unto us tonight. For those of us here present and those in assemblies and locations and those who are watching through the social media handles. Let your presence permeate in our midst even tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And amen. You may be seated. Once again, you are welcome to the Bible study tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the seventh study on the Holy Spirit series that we've begun for some time now. The Holy Spirit, the church, and you. Today we'll be looking at biblical typology. In the book of Psalm 89, verse 20. Psalm 89, verse 20. I have found David my servant. With whom? Or with him? Or with my holy oil have I anointed him? Praise God. Psalm 92, verse 10. But my horn shall thou exalt let the horn of the unicorn I shall be anointed with fresh oil God bless you it shall be unto you as according to your declaration in the book of Isaiah chapter 44 verse 3 to 4 Isaiah 44 verse 3 to 4 for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. And my blessing upon thy offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass. As willows by the water courses. Joel chapter 2. Reading from verse 23. Joel Chapter 2, 23 to 29. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he had given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the later rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the feet and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. Yeah. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. Yeah. I thought you are this one, your image should have been higher than every other one. Because that is what the Holy Spirit is meant to do. He will restore the years that the locust has eaten. The ones that cankerworm has eaten. The ones that the caterpillars have destroyed. Amen. And the palmer worm. He said, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty. Amen. And be satisfied. Amen. And praise the name of the Lord your God. Amen. That has dealt wondrously with you. Amen. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of you, Amen. even Israel. That I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Amen. Your old men shall dream dreams. Amen. Your young men shall see visions. Amen. And the last verse. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. If If you took cognizance of all the verses of scriptures we have read, you realize that all that we are going to treat tonight appear in those scriptures. The oil, the water, the rain, and the dove. Let's read Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, and then 6 to 16. Matthew Chapter 3, 13, chapter 3, 11 to 16. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with a fire. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his flour and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And comest thou to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight out straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And just stop there. Praise God. So you see oil in Psalm 89 verse 20. You see water in Isaiah 44 where he said, I'll pour water upon him that is thirsty. Joel chapter 2 where he said, he has given you the rain, the, form, the former rain moderately and also he will cause to rain upon you the former and the what the later rain and then in Matthew where we already talk about the dove the Holy Spirit descending like a dove upon Jesus Christ remember and have it at the back of your mind that we're looking at biblical typology let's take a look at our memory verse as it were in Matthew chapter 3 verse 16 and Jesus when he was baptized went up straight way out of the water and lo the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him I want to say here that the heaven did not open unto Jesus because he was the son of God no not just because he was the son of God. There were others who, were also, who came there also for baptism. But it was not recorded that the heavens opened on their behalf. But if you remember, the Bible said when he left Galilee and walked down to Jordan, and that is about 25 kilometers. And that shows you the hunger, the thirst, and the desire to fulfill the will of God in the life of Jesus Christ. So when he got there, John saw him and said, no, I need to come to you to be baptized. You don't need to come to me. But Jesus said, suffer it to be so now, for it is proper for us to do what? Fulfill all righteousness. So you see, Jesus fulfilled all what? He fulfilled all righteousness. He fulfilled all righteousness. No wonder the heaven got open unto him. 
he fulfilled all righteousness. We will see the testimony as we go on in this teaching tonight. That of the truth, Jesus fulfilled all righteousness. He dotted all the I's and he crossed all the T's. And so heaven was so happy that they could not withhold any longer. They unleash, they release. Let's go down to our Bible study outline. It said the descent of the spirit like a dove on Jesus Christ was a testimony. That's what I was telling you. It was a clear testimony concerning Jesus Christ. A testimony of the fullness of the spirit of what? Purity. So Jesus did not live any and any kind of life. He lived a holy life. A life of transparency. A life of honesty. A life of integrity. A life that fulfilled all righteousness. It was a clear testimony on behalf of Jesus. He lived a life of faithfulness, sincerity, etc. In dwelling in him to be the purifier of the fallen man. No man has ever lived a sin-free life on earth except him. Look at verse 617 of that Matthew. Matthew chapter 3 verse 17. Matthew 3 17. As he came out of that water, the Bible says, and lo, a voice from heaven. Okay? Saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am. The father God was pleased in everything that Jesus Christ did. He was pleased. That was the testimony. A clear testimony. We we'll pray that that should be the same testimony with you and I. The father bear witness of him. Right there, the triune God was complete. They were there. The son was there in River Jordan. And the Holy Spirit descended like a dove and lighted upon him. Then the father God from heaven did what? Spoke. That this is my beloved son in whom I am well. I am so satisfied with his life. I am so satisfied with his character. I am so satisfied with his relationship with others. I am so satisfied. I'm well pleased in everything he does. The question tonight, as we go through this study, is, is the Father God, is the Son, the Holy Spirit, pleased with you in all that you do? Is heaven pleased with you? Is heaven pleased with the way you talk? Are you the one that is given over to talkativeness? And when you are talking, you add maggi, you add pepper, you add what? Onion. Is the Father God pleased with you? With your relationship with opposite sex, is the Father God pleased with you? Is the Father God pleased with you? How you do business with other people? Is, is he pleased with you? The Bible says, I mean the outline here stated that no man has ever lived a sin-free life on earth. Nobody. Except him. Except Jesus Christ. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 21. The Bible says, For God the Father had made him to be what? To be Can I feel you tonight? God the Father has made him to be what? He has made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? That we might be made what? The righteousness of God. So what God is saying here is that Jesus never knew any sin. But he was made a sin offering for us. 
He was made what? A sin offering. The scapegoat. That the judgment fell upon. He never knew any sin, but he was made sin for us. You see, Jesus became everything for us. And I think it is high time we rise up and begin to appropriate those things that Jesus Christ has paid fully with his life on the cross of Calvary. This is one of them. The Father God made him sin for us. In other words, we are not, to, we are not expected to be slaves to sin anymore. Hello? We are not expected to be what? Slaves to sin. He has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that you and I might become what? The righteousness of God in him. In other words, sin shall not have dominion over you. That's not one of them. Another one is concerning your healing. In Isaiah chapter 53, Isaiah 53, look at from verse 4. Isaiah 53 verse 4. He says, surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet, we did esteem him stricken and smitten and afflicted of God or by God, being afflicted by God. But he was wounded for what? Our transgression. Take note. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes. We are what? Remember 2 Corinthians 5.21 He made him to be sin for us. In other words, we ought not to be servant and slave to sin. Sin should not have dominion over you and me. And now here, surely, assuredly, an accomplished fact, he has borne our griefs, he has carried our sorrows. For he was wounded for our transgression and he was breathed for our iniquities. And the chastisement of your peace and mine was upon him. And with his stripes, we are what? Healed. So, it is left for you and I to rise up and appropriate and lay hold on the things that Jesus has accomplished for us. That's why we're, we're telling us on Sunday, we need an eye opening. The spiritual eye to be able to receive a revelation of the supernatural, of, I mean, supernatural power of God. These things have been accomplished. Jesus has done it. That sickness ought not to be in your body. Whatever is there is illegal. And it needs to be evicted out of your body. When our eyes of understanding opens, like Paul prayed to the Ephesian brethren, he said that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, being open, that you might see the things that God has accomplished and achieved for you. And then number three, Second Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, read verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, reading verse 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was what? Church. Though he was what? Yet for your sakes he became what? Poor. That you, through him, or through his poverty, might be what? In other words, poverty has nothing to do with you. So, these three things, he has accomplished them long ago. You are not meant to be sick. You are not meant to be a slave to sin. And you are not meant to be poor. He was rich for your sake and my sake. He became what? Poor. That we might be made what? rich praise the name of the Lord we'll continue to say this and teach this until he gets hold of you and when he gets hold of you your life will never remain the same 
biblical typology from the outline is a branch of Christian theology that uses symbols and emblems as a type of the reality or to represent events that will come up in the future. For instance, the Old Testament typifies events that clearly turn your outline over, clearly points to rapture such as the removal of Lord's family from Sodom and Gomorrah before destruction. Now, look up here. Let me explain so that you will understand very well. Now, when you talk about rapture, rapture is the catching away of the saints. Hello? Is it what? The catching away of the saints. Now, to illustrate this and to confirm this, that this is going to take place, God, first of all, demonstrated it and showed it in the life or through the life of Elijah and that of Enoch. Hello? Hello? I'm sure you know the Bible says Elijah was caught up to heaven by what? A wide wind. He went to heaven alive. And so we are talking about rapture. Rapture is the catching away of the saints. When Jesus Christ will appear in the air, which will soon happen, but the time and the hour, I don't know. But the signs all over shows that his coming is very near. When Jesus will appear in the air and the trumpet will sound, the Bible said the dead in Christ will rise what? First. And those who are alive at the time he will come will be cut up. Cut up. That's hapazo in the Greek. Will be cut up to meet the Lord in the air. So, there is no argument because even in the Old Testament, we see it happen with who? I just said it now. now. Elijah. Am I correct? And another person again is Enoch. The Bible said God translated Enoch to where? And in the Hebrew chapter 11, the Bible explained that before his translation to heaven, he has this record or testimony that he pleased God. Praise the name of the Lord. Then there is this also this teaching that some preachers teach and some theologians hold saying that believers will be here. In fact, already that the great tribulation have already started. And that believers will partake of what? The great tribulation. But that is not true. By the grace of God, I will not be here. I don't know about you. But listen very carefully. God also showed that and explained it in the Bible that the righteous will not be punished or destroyed with the wicked. Before Sodom, Gomorrah, and Adma and Zeboim were destroyed, God, first of all, removed who? Lord. Are you following the teaching tonight? So those who are preaching the gospel or the theology that the believers will participate in the great tribulation are making a serious word mistake. It is not true. Before God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah, he first of all removed who? Lord. The Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is what? Established. Elijah and Enoch has confirmed that. That definitely there is something called what? Rapture. And the believers will be caught up. Then here, it's also showing us that the believers will not be here during the great tribulation. We have seen a uh, lot. Then the second one is this. Before God sent the flood that destroyed the world that was then, he first of all gathered Noah and his family and put them inside the ark. Am I correct? And shut the door himself before the flood or the rain came. So he removed the righteous away before sending the judgment. So you will not be here. I will not be here. 
during the time of great tribulation, God will remove his own before he will send the judgment. Except those who are living a double standard life. Those who are living a hypocritical life. Those who deceive themselves, who come to church and but they are committing atrocities. Those are the people that will remain here. Those who love position, power, they will be here dragging for power and position when the saints have gone. They will be pastoring the church. I mean the chairs. Huh? They will be leading the benches and every other thing when the church have gone. The church triumphant. But may the Lord help you and I not to be here at that time in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you are clear with this illustration. Am I correct? So that you don't go and get confused outside because many teachings are flying over everywhere. The Bible said, so that you will not be tossed to and fro by every wind of what? Doctrine. There is something called rapture. It will take place. It is the catching away of the saints. And with all that is happening even in the Middle East, it is also a clear indication that the time is drawing so close. So let the righteous remain what? And let the wicked remain wicked. See from the outline. The separation of Noah's household before the uh, 150 days of ceaseless rain that destroyed the whole earth. The separation of Moses came from those that kept evil company with Datan, Koran, and Abiram. Before the judgment came also for this group of people, Dotan, Koran, and Abiram, the book of Numbers, Moses came and the Lord has already told him to separate the people. And he asked, he came and declared, who is on the Lord's side? And Moses announced to them and called the people to separate themselves from the midst of these wicked people. And they separated themselves. And as soon as that was done, the Bible said judgment fell. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed Dotan, Koran, and Abira and all their families alive. For the first time in the history of the world, the people went to hell alive. Just like Elijah and Enoch went to heaven what? Alive. These people went to hell alive. It's a terrible thing. So God separated them. Separated the wicked from the righteous before judgment falls. This is the benefit of coming to Bible study. The people who are only that are praying, Sunday, Sunday medicine, they won't understand this. In like manner, the Holy Spirit is variously represented in the Old Testament in types and symbols. A few instances are mentioned below. Number one, river. Praise God. Now, I want to also take, take note as we go on. Look up here. Every of these emblems and symbols of the Holy Spirit are all universal. Is there any place in this world that there is no river? Huh? Uh, as I'm not feeling you, church. If there is any, please let me know. Is there any place in this world that there is no river? River is what? Universal. Everywhere. Are you talking about dove? He said, but right from the Old Testament, the Bible. This word here is an English word, dove. That's not what we call it in my own language. <laughs> I'm sure you have your own like dialect where that you call dove. Am I correct? Am I correct? It's, it's like I'm speaking to strange people here tonight. So dove is all over everywhere. Are you talking about wind? Wind is everywhere in the whole world. How about breath? Is there? 
fire everywhere, rain everywhere, cloud, dew all over. So what are we trying to say? These things are universal, symbolizing the presence of the Holy Spirit all over the world. There's nowhere the Holy Spirit is not. He is so many presence. Praise the name of the Lord. Is what? It's everywhere. So river, Psalms 46 verse 1 to 6. Rivers. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear. Though dollar goes to 200 for one dollar. We shall not be afraid. <laughs> for God is with us. And is our refuge. Though the earth be removed. Though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the what? The swelling thereof. It says, pause and what? Meditate. Think. Pause and meditate and realize that there is what? A river. There is a river. Can I hear you say there is a river? You know, there is a river in the life of every true child of God. Not just, not the river that runs in our communities and everything. I'm talking about the real river. The river that never drawn, runs dry. There is a river, the stream whereof shall make glad the city of God. It makes one glad when all things are going banana. No, Job said the other day, when men shall be shouting and crying and screaming and say there is a casting down. But to you, it shall be what? A lifting up. Because there is what? A river. The question is, do you have that river inside of you? You know, some people don't have this river we are talking of. This river makes one glad. But when you look at some people, their face looks like limestone. As if their goat has died. As if God has died. As if something has happened. No smile. No joy. Because the real person that produces this thing is not there. The Holy Spirit. He said, there is a river. The stream whereof shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is where? In the midst of her. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. The church will not be moved. Let men do whatever they like. The church will not be moved. He said, God is in the midst of her. God shall help her. And that right early. Verse 6. The hidden rage, the kingdom, will move. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a river, brethren. John chapter 7, verse 38. The Bible said on that great occasion, the feast on that day, that, the last day of that feast, when Jesus attended and he was there and saw people that came and they were going, they came with their problems and needs and everything. They were going back with their needs. But Jesus stood and cried and looked at them and said, If any man among you going, who came here with a burden and came here with a problem and you are going back with it and you are desiring to be free, if any man test, let him do what? Let him come. And so Jesus screamed in verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. I remember some time ago, and uh, I think that person should be in our midst tonight. We are ministering the Holy, Spirit, um, Holy Ghost baptism. And when the baptism of the Holy Ghost came upon this person and we were talking rivers out of your belly right there and the person was bubbling and the thing, you know, the Holy Ghost was coming through her mouth and she began to speak and the Holy Spirit gave her what? utterance. Out of your belly shall flow rivers. 
rivers. I told you the other day, there's different being a child of God and being baptized and having the river, the real river. You can go to the river and fetch water, but that water will finish. But the river will still be there. True or false? There is a river. Contact that river tonight. I mean, contact that river tonight. So that that river will remain there in your life and never run dry. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said the gladdening river. In the midst of confusion and turmoil. That serves human strength. By the roaring of the sea. Cannot be some, cannot be some mysterious river. Flowing in the countryside of Israel. Or in our communities. This river is obviously God himself. Do you agree? I sincerely agree. May you drink from that river tonight. Number two, dove. The dove. It is said that doves are true to their mates for life. That means a dove, when married, so to say, stick to their mates to life. If one dies, the other one will mourn the other one until he or she also do what? Die. Can you imagine that? <laughs> so powerful. So powerful. The references are there. We have already read in Matthew chapter 3, 13 to 17. The Bible says when Jesus came out of the water and the Holy Spirit descended upon him, in the form of what? A dove. Lightning upon him. In Genesis chapter 8, from verse 8 to 12, when Noah sent forth the dove, and he went out, because the flood was still on the land. There was nowhere to stay or to perch. The, the dove came back. And after some time again, Noah sent the dove again. And this time around when the dove was coming back, he came back with a leaf, an olive leaf in his mouth. And you know that wherever, whether anything is happening or they are causing riot and the moment you see somebody holding a green leaf, what does it signify? Peace. Am I correct? These are qualities of the dove. So he came back with an olive leaf. And that was an indication there is what? Harmony, a space, the water have dried. And the vegetations have started coming up again. Praise God. I'm reading from the outline. The natural dog possesses rare qualities of quietness. When you see some people, when you see some people who say they are Christian, but they are too noisy, it's an indication that the Holy Spirit is not in that person. They are too noisy. Wherever they are, everybody is like, ah, this person has come on. Ah, it will make noise. If you see a dove, and a dove comes and pets here, any problem, psh, off it goes. Quietness, Faithfulness, we have already explained. They maintain one mate all life. Meekness, gentle, very, very meek. Dove is so clean, so pure. Extremely gentle, clean. Have you ever seen a dove? There are some of them, if you go out now, you will see some of them. Their body is so neat, so clean. I'm very selective of his partner. These qualities are not found in all effort. It is often used as a symbol of the Holy Spirit. If you see people living a dirty life, I don't mean being physically dirty, even though that can also attribute or follow, because out there they say, cleanness is next or what? But you see people always talking about filthy things and dirty things, immoral things, pornographic, then it's an indication that the Holy Spirit cannot stay in the 
in that temple, in that body. It cannot. It cannot. It doesn't like to stay where there is what? Death. The dove is not a scavenger. It's not. It's a clean bird. It's pure. Number three. Wind. In John chapter 3, verse 8. John chapter 3, verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listed. And thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh. You hear the wind blowing. You hear it. But you don't know where the wind is coming from. The source. But you can hear the sound. That this is wind. And you can also feel it. The effect. But cannot tell where it cometh. And whither it go wet. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. Every sincere genuine Christian child of God. That is filled with the Holy Spirit. Is a wonder. Did you hear what I said? It's a wonder. It's a mystery. Mystery to the world and mystery to Satan. Satan cannot understand every field. I know every child of God filled with the Holy Spirit. He cannot. Every child of God filled with the Holy Spirit is an indeterminate equation that the devil cannot solve. It's a mystery. Just like you cannot decipher you, where the wind is coming from and where it's going. But you can hear the sound of the wind. That's why he said, so it is with everyone that is born of what? The Spirit. The devil can't solve you. It's impossible. He cannot solve you. You are an equation that the devil cannot solve. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, you see there that the wind we are talking about. Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty what? Wind. That's the Holy Spirit. A rushing mighty wind coming down. Let me read from the outline. As much as the natural wind can be localized, it is also Potential of being what? Universal. It's everywhere. Over there in the western world, you hear hurricane, typhoon, huh? cyclone. Uh, sometimes they give it name. Katrina, Florina, whatever they call their names. <laughs> but thank God we don't experience such things over here. But yet we still have wind. Sometimes if you blow here in this our com premises here, you see how these winds are fly, you know, flinging cheers. <laughs> you wonder how this wind will carry cheers like this and fling them to a distance. So, it is, the, the, the wind is irreversible and unpredictable. It possesses the ability to be very destructive. Is that true of us? Very, very true. Very, very true. It has power. Which day was that I was watching something that was posted to me? If you see where wind was bringing down houses, carrying vehicle, motor, like, in, like ordinary people, flinging them. You wonder, is this wind? Oh yes, it can be destructive. And the Holy Spirit is like that. In as much as it's gentle, calm, lovely, and so on and so forth. But the Holy Spirit also can be very, very what? Somebody say, ah, is it possible? It is. Let me show you. 
Very, very. That's why we need to be very careful how we relate with him and how we do things even in the house of God. And don't take things for granted. You don't take things for granted. In the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts chapter 5 verse 3. Acts chapter 5 verse 3. But a certain man named Ananias was with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back. I said from verse 3, sorry, verse 3. But Peter said Ananias, why had Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? The next verse. Whilst it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? And thou hast not lied unto men, but unto the next verse. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. What happened there? Huh? The destructive power of the wind. <laughs> Revival was, revival was on and somebody decided to collaborate with the devil to puncture the revival. The Holy Ghost said, Allah, I better remove you first so that the revival will continue. Fear came upon people because something strange has happened. That day, Ananias' life was what? Destroyed. He said, you have not lied unto men, but unto... Why has the devil filled your heart to lie unto the Holy Ghost? Now look at verse 7. Verse 7. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered and said, answer, I mean, answered up unto her, tell me. It was an opportunity for her. Tell me. Whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. Peter said, okay. And Peter answered, then Peter said unto her, how is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord. Behold the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. What happened? She also gave up the ghost. If God didn't do that, that fear wouldn't come upon people. Sometimes we need a repeat performance in the church today. Huh? We are keeping quiet. <laughs> I said sometimes we need such repeat performance in the church today because many people open their mouth anyhow. Many people say things they ought not to say and do things they ought not to do. We need such you know, repeat performance so that fear will seize people's heart and they will sit up. The Bible said when they saw it, fear gripped the people's heart. I'm still reading from your outline. And possesses the ability to be very destructive when strong and also very gentle. The Holy Spirit, just like the wind, can come suddenly and change the spiritual atmosphere. The wind is a clear symbol, a clear symbol of the Holy Spirit. It symbolizes his dynamism, self-existence, omnipresence. As it is not tenable to contend resist or direct the wind so too is the same with the Holy Spirit no one can control him who are you to control the Holy Spirit and neither can he be predicted by some engineering forecasting process you cannot he is God 
You cannot even test him or find him in the test tube or in the laboratory. It's not. Job said, can thou by searching find out who? God. You can't find God in the laboratory. But you can find God by believing and trusting in him. Number four, breath. Numa. Breath. Breath of life. In Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says God made man out of the dust of the earth and did what? And breathed into him the breath of life. That's the spirit. That's why you should know that man is what? A spirit. He has a soul, but he lives in a body. So God breathed into him. Job chapter 3 verse 4, he said, The breath of the Almighty has made me, has formed me. It's the spirit, the bread that is alive. And if the spirit goes, that's why we warn and talk and we keep saying it. Take care of your body. Take care of your body. Because the body was first of all formed before the spirit occupied. If you neglect your body and feel you cannot hear and feel that you, you are strong and take things for granted and weaken this body and make this body unconducive for the Holy Spirit because your body is the house of the Holy Spirit the best thing the Holy Spirit will do is to do what? to leave you and when the Holy Spirit leaves you you are dead and in my place they say when somebody that, anybody that killed himself nobody should cry for him so take care of your body Spend time to rest. Spend time to do what? And as I'm saying this, I'm saying it specifically to our women. I love you. We don't want to miss you people. But love yourself. Jesus said, love your neighbor as your... You better love yourself. Don't be more Catholic than the Pope. It's very important. It was God who told us in the book of Exodus, I think chapter 30, verse 17, if I'm correct. Exodus 30, 17. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, the next verse, Thou shalt also make a lever and brass and this, and so on. I, I think uh, I've missed the verse now, but I think it should be there, where he says, and the Lord finished creating everything, not in Genesis. And on the seventh day, the Lord did what? Rested and was refreshed. How many of you have read that passage before? Raise your hand up. When I, oh, you have read it. I'm seeing sisters raising their hand. So if God rested and refreshed, who are you? Who are you? If God rested, in fact, that, look at it there. I think, yes, 31st by 17. He said, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. So God can rest and refresh and recruit. And you want to be more Catholic than the Pope. If you die, nobody will cry for you. In Mark chapter 6, you see it there also again. Jesus, now, this is Old Testament. But now, this is New Testament. Mark chapter 6, God said, or Jesus, spoke, Jesus said so. He told the disciples, we have been so busy. I think Mark chapter 6, reading from verse 30. He said, we've been so busy. So much so that there's no time. And, and the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they have done and that, that. The next verse, let's see. The next verse, 31. 31. And he said unto them, Come ye yourself. That's Jesus speaking. 
Come ye yourself apart into a desert place and do what? That's Jesus. Talking to his disciples. He said, come ye yourself apart and rest a while. For there, there were many coming and going and they had no leisure so much as to they have been so busy. No time to rest, no time to eat. The next verse. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. They obeyed him. And they went into a desert place quietly and did what? Rested. May God give you wisdom. Amen. Let's go on. So, number five. Other symbols and emblems of the Holy Spirit are what? Again? And next? And then? Next one? And? They are all there. Like I said, there's no place in this world that there's no fire. A fire is a respecter of nobody. It consumes. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, verse 2. Isaiah 64, verse 2. Uh, there's an assignment there given to every one of us. Go home and do But we're just reading this one. Search and, you know, substantiate. He said, and when the melting fire, there is fire that is what? Melting in nature. Fire that melts something. It is not just an ordinary fire. Huh? He said, and when the melting fire, as when the melting fire, rather, as when the melting fire burned, the fire that caused waters to boil, to make the name of our God known to his adversaries, is that an ordinary fire? No, it's the fire of the Holy Ghost that will make the name of our God what? Known to his adversaries. That the nations may tremble at thy presence. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. When it comes, people will know that of a truth, this is the finger of God. That's what you need. I'm sure you know that the devil is an iguana. He does not hear. He's a deaf man. The only language the devil understands is the language of what? Power. The language of power. And that's why you and I, we need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Pharaoh, let my people go. He said, who is that God? But when he saw power, he was the one that called Moses. Please, come, 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 come. Don't delay. Come, you, go and do as you have said. Because he has seen what? Power. Rain. We've seen that in the book of Joel, chapter 2. He has given you the former rain, moderately. And he will cause to come the former and the later. So rain is there in the book of Joel, chapter 2, 23. Cloud, it is there. In the book of Matthew chapter 17 from 14 to 16. Matthew 17. Four to six. They answered, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou will, let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. The next verse. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of where? The cloud. We said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Praise God. I'm talking about the cloud of glory. In the Old Testament is there, the cloud of pillar by, the cloud of pillar by, by night and the, pl cl and the cloud of pillar by day. By fire in the night and of the day. So following and leading them, guiding them. Then the dew. I'm sure we all know what the dew is all about. 
that small tiny droplets that drops in the evening it's not all that visible but you can feel the effect bring your chair and you're sitting outside maybe you're holding a meeting in the night and under open heaven everywhere is cool and calm suddenly you will start feeling some coolness am i correct the chair will be well that is the dew dropping that's what the bible called the dew of heaven it is not even the rain necessarily that helps the vegetation it is what the dew that falls every day every night that helped the ecosystem when the dry season is there and all the vegetations are you know struggling and dying but in the night that tiny droplet things will begin to fall gradually and with that dripping i mean dropping it penetrates into the earth nourishes and refreshes the vegetations that's the dew and that's what the holy spirit does if you look at the hymn you sang tonight you will see it there okay when he said in, in stanza stanza four come as the dew and sweetly bless this consecrated hour so that the barrenness so that may barrenness rejoice to own what the fertilizing power praise god the dew of heaven may he come upon you tonight when he comes upon you you will be refreshed when he comes upon you he will energize you and he will strengthen you very important oil ah there's no place you can talk or go into this world that you will not see oil whether it's granite oil you know or palm oil you know oil is what oil it's oil and it's very very important very very important oil lubricates it makes things easy sometimes the key is rusted and everything when you drop oil it's softened and you know wash off the rust the rust and you before you know it the key or whatever is opened oil is very very important it is also meant for consecration to consecrate people in the, in the old testament it also meant for healing oil and the holy spirit is the healer praise god the holy spirit is the one that anoints when it comes upon you the anointing comes upon you so you need him and you need him desperately as we go through this study tonight look at your life is there any way this you know symbols and emblems of the holy spirit can you see them in your life manifesting as we look at the book of galatians chapter 5 is meekness there is tenderness there is gentleness is it in your life are you transparent are you honest it talks about water very very important nobody lives without water even if you're fasting it is only by 28 or 30 days if you don't take water then the other one is preparing for your or send message to marine base at least at most 28 or 30 days if you drink water maybe you won't die but if you don't till it passes there go and ask stories they will tell you better and nobody stops drinking until he dies from the very day you say nah, nah, you drank water am i correct until today you are still drinking water water is very important and you cannot do without the holy spirit what we are saying tonight or this teaching is very very important brethren like the oil we made mention of no engine 
I mean, I repeat, no engine runs without oil. Is there an engine that runs without oil? No, I've not seen an engine that runs without oil. If the oil is not there, it will knock. And you, as a child of God, if the oil of the Holy Ghost is not in you, you will knock engine. Some already have knocked. They can't pray again. Some have already knocked. They cannot even evangelize anymore. Some have knocked. They can't even read the Bible anymore. Some have knocked. They can't carry out spiritual exercises because the oil has dried up. Tonight, may your head never lack oil. May your horn be exalted like that of a unicorn. And let your head be anointed with fresh oil. As we go to God in prayer tonight, the last one said communion, emblems. You look at the correction was said we should take note tonight. We should stop calling Holy Communion emblem materials. But rather, it should be what? Communion emblems. The Holy Spirit is not a material thing. <laughs> it's an emblem. And very, very important. Let me share this with us here from the scripture here. Let's look at John. John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verse 21. 21. And then from 25 to 27. John chapter 13. Reading from verse 21. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall do what? Shall betray me. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, that's John the beloved, said unto him, Lord, who is it? Because the disciples were troubled and worried when Jesus told them that one of you will betray me. They became confused and worried. And Peter looked up and saw John lying at the bosom of Jesus and said, the disciple whom Jesus loved, please, can you ask him, who is the person? And John asked him, then Jesus answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sop. That is the person I was going to give the food. When I have dipped it, and when he has dipped the sop, he gave it to who? To Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. The next verse, 27. And after the sop, after he has taken the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, that 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 doest, do what? Do quickly. Do quickly. Verse 30. Verse 30. Verse 30. He then, having received the sop, that is Judas, having received the sop, went immediately out. And it was what? And it was night. 31st. The next verse. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man, what? Glorified. And God is glorified in Look up here. I told you the other day, it was the, the communion that Judas Iscariot took that sealed his doom. You know, some of us feel we are bold. We are men and women of consequence. Jesus clearly spoke when they asked him, Lord, who is the person who is going to betray you? He said, watch, is the person I'm going to, when I, when I have put this food inside the soap and I give him, that's the person. And they were on the communion table. They were on the communion table. And after he has dipped it and he gave it to Judas, he opened his mouth and he collected and ate. And the Bible said, as soon as he ate that thing, what happened? Satan entered into him. And he went out and it was night. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians before we pray. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 to 29. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, 
took what? Bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The next verse. After the same manner, also he took the cup and when he has supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as of as you drink it in remembrance of me. The next verse. For as of as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. The next verse. Wherefore, can I hear you say, wherefore? wherefore. Say it again. Wherefore. Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. Did you understand? Whosoever, whosoever eateth this bread and drinketh this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. The next verse. The next verse. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. The next verse. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth what? And drinketh what? Eateth and drinketh what? To himself. Not discerning the Lord's body. That was what Judas went and ate. And some of us here, after you gossip, after you have spoken evil, after you have done all the all banal of atrocity, you will serve communion and you will take. But look at what the Bible says. The next verse. For this cause, many are what? Spiritually weak. The devil has laid hold on them. For this cause, not discerning, taking God for granted, feeling that nothing, for this cause, many are weak and what? Sickly among you. And many are, many are what? They were sleep there. Many have died. Many have died. I told you, it's not everybody that died in redemption ministry that you say has gone to heaven. <laughs> Where is Mr. Boldman? Mrs. Boldman, strong man, confidence and all that. A man of consequence, a woman of consequence. See the word of God. Judas, after hearing all those things from the very lips of Jesus, dared Jesus and ate the bread. And walked away. After all, what will happen? And the Bible said he walked into night, and that was it. If you read at that passage, as soon as he said, and it was night, full stop. That was the end of Judas. Have you eaten it unwittingly? Have you taken the Lord for granted? Do you know when we talk about taking God for granted, it may not even be a, the, uh, an open sin which you have committed. If you take his servant for granted, your teacher that teach you logo servant for granted, your unit leader, your unit head, or an elder, somebody that is older than you, is supposed to give a core respect and all that. You see, the scripture cannot be broken. You can't eat your cake and have it back. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Are you guilty? Call upon God. Call upon God tonight. And tell him to have mercy upon you. As you bow your head to pray tonight, the subject matter needs a thorough examination of our lives. A pastor made a very critical statement that is worth re-echoing. As much as we take care of our engines, car engines, motorcycle engines, Servicing those engines to ensure that they are serving us well. When you do not service your spiritual life. And somehow 
the Holy Spirit leaves you in his words your life has been knocked your life has been knocked yes we see you living no wonder you talk carelessly no wonder you talk without any reservation because something has loved you because the Holy Spirit the controller of your life the spirit of truth is no longer indwelling in you tonight are you crying out to him are you telling him that father I have realized my nakedness I have realized my inabilities as a result of my having knocked the engine no wonder my life is loose no wonder there is no controlling force no controlling power anything goes but when a man is under the control and the tutorship of the Holy Spirit, he is a reserved man. He is a polished man. He is a man that chooses words before they are released. Yes, sir. Because his words are ordered and uttered by the Spirit of truth himself. Father, tonight, on bended knees, we come before you. Do not pass us by. Lord, do not pass us by. While you are reaching out to others, Father, reach out to us. Therefore, I command you, receive ye the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And let your life be oiled again. Let your life be refurbished again. Let your life be synthesized again. In the name of Jesus. Father, from tonight, may we be better Christians than ever before. Amen. We are glad that, oh God, our ears and our eyes are witnesses of these remarkable teachings. Therefore, Lord, help us. Help thou our infirmities. Help thou our inadequacies. Help thou, oh God, our inabilities. Whatever boldness that has come upon you, satanic boldness, forbidding strength, ah, I cancel that strength in your life. Anyone that has such a forbidding strength to raise his eyes or to raise his words against the Holy Spirit, against the instructions of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter which school you went. It doesn't matter the graduate school you have attended. What matters is that the Holy Spirit has taken his flight. But Lord, let mercy prevail over judgment. Amen. Lord, let mercy prevail over judgment. Amen. And build profitable Christians out of these ones. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can I hear a better amen? Amen. Thank you so much. Please, let's spend time on this subject matter as the Lord helps us. Hallelujah. Shall we dip hands into our pockets and bags? bring out an offering for the Lord tonight. We trust you are blessed. We want to sow into his treasury. And there is a principle that applies. There's a day of harvest. As you sow, you reap. And you reap bountifully in Jesus' name. If you have found something, shall we stand to our feet and raise it up to the heavens as we pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening. We thank you, Lord, for on a daily basis you feed us with your word. Even tonight, Lord, we are blessed. Lord, in appreciation, Lord, we are giving unto you this token. We ask that you receive from us and let the blessings from heaven come upon us in abundance in Jesus' name. And amen.
Father, bless every seed soon tonight. Thank you because we know it shall be so. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank God for such a very enlightening teaching. We want to let us know that the activities remain the same for the rest of the week. All ordained deacons at the headquarters and those that are at the various assemblies will have the last general meeting tomorrow, the second of November, right here at the headquarters. Time is 4:30. Youth Night of Destiny, uh, which is a night which holds this Friday, and time is 10 p.m. Shall we rise to pray? Can we rise? Come, Father, come, Son. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, come and take your place in my life. The grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. God bless you for coming.